Hello and welcome to the Fishbowl Inventory uh, 2011 product overview. My name is Kendra Kerr and my team has been working on the uh, Fishbowl Mobile Warehouse portion of 2011. We've got some exciting new features to show you here in our new product. Uh, as you can see, first of all, the uh, modules and uh, module background have been redesigned to match the 2011 look and feel of the Fishbowl client. And we've also got two new modules added in, both the pack module and cycle module are new for our latest release. We'll go ahead and uh, look at the pack module first. Uh, here in packing, we have the orders to be packed, a list of any orders that are not yet in the system uh, as packed orders. And uh, we've got the uh, options associated with those being the number of packs to list on the device. This is for uh, size purposes of the amount of memory your device can handle. Uh, also here on our global settings, uh, an admin only section, we have the ability to display the edit screen always. When scanning, this will make it so uh, when you're picking items that do not have tracking associated with them, you can still validate the quantity and things of that nature. Uh, we also have an option to force quantity one on any each type parts. What this means is that if you have 10 of a particular widget to be packed, it will require your materials handlers to pack them in a quantity one. Scan the barcode and it counts one each time. So uh, a quantity of 10 would have 10 barcode scans associated with it. Uh, this will help with uh, a greater accuracy among your parts and getting things packed into the proper cartons. Also we have the ability now to print from uh, the mobile device. Uh, the same setting that you'd see in the Fishbowl client on printing the packing list either by prompt uh, on an always setting or never if it's not something that's part of your process. Uh, this relies simply on the default packing list uh, as set in your reports module and on the default printer associated with that packing list or the default printer of your server computer. So some nice module options there for how packing operates. Let's we begin by selecting the order that we'll be working on. Uh, either by selecting that on screen and selecting open or using a barcode scanning that in. All of your pick tickets packing lists have that barcode associated with them. Uh, we then come to the screen where we have all our products located and you would again either scan or select these. Uh, any item that has tracking associated with it, uh, as you pack it you'll need to confirm the tracking as well. Uh, you'll notice uh, some of the other pieces would be the carton that you'd be going into to add a, an additional carton. Just hit our Add Carton button to make any changes. You can select from the existing list of cartons. So as I select Add Carton once more, I now have my three cartons. And at any point in the process, you can designate a part to go into uh, one of these three cartons or as many cartons as you add. Uh, before you finish the order, we also have the ability to change the carrier. So if this was set to go will call and it's now going out on UPS, we can update that. Again here I'm going to select my part and then select pack. And I verify the quantity that I am packing. Now because this inventory has already been picked, I simply need to confirm the serial number or any tracking associated with this item. Once I have each of these items completed with the associated serial numbers, either scanning them in or selecting them from the table as you can see here, uh, it's going to ask me if I want to print that packing list because we had the option set to prompt. And if I want that to go out the door, I'd simply select yes. If not, I don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and say no in this case. And then it takes us back to the home screen and we can work on our next order. So that's our first module is that pack uh, module here in uh, the, the mobile side of things. Uh, also, we added in the cycle module. Let's go ahead and take a look at it now. Uh, cycle is a, a very straightforward, we want it to be more of a physical count cycle where you would walk out into the warehouse, uh, choose a location and count the part or parts in that given location. Uh, when we scan in a location, we simply enter either the location name or the location tag barcode. So in this case I'm going to cycle from our stock 100 location. If you're going to be doing multiple counts in a given location, you can simply select the lock feature and then scan your parts in and each quantity that you update will refresh the part in the quantity field but leave our location rather than forcing you to continually scan that location barcode. Uh, also if you're working with parts that have any type of tracking associated with them, uh, not only the part number but also the uh, primary tracking or the amount of tracking that is necessary on that part uh, would come up here. So it's a very uh, very flexible, easy to use module at any point. If you need to see the inventory associated with that, just simply hit the part link and it will take you to um, the part inventory for that given uh, item that you're, you're wanting to count. If you need to view the inventory with tracking associated with it, select our tracking button. We can see our list of inventory associated there. 
and then we go back and it gets us right back into our cycle count module. So those would be the new features that uh, we've added here uh, as far as modules are concerned. Uh, we also have uh, a way to change the error sound when you first log into Fishbowl Mobile, or as you first launch the product rather. Uh, you have the ability to change the error sound. This should uh, help with any time you're scanning something. If you're not looking at the screen always, an option can be set to any wave type file. Right now it's going to what we call the rubber ducky sound, a, a very distinct and uh, easy to recognize sound we feel that should be beneficial in the warehouse. Uh, and then within the product itself, we've also added a couple more options. Let me go ahead and log in here and show you those also. Uh, they would be on just the home screen. Uh, here in these options we have obviously the ability to change the order of modules. Now this is all user right based and so if a, a user does not have access to picking or to receiving or something of that matter uh, it, it's not going to show up in this list. But any modules that are available can be reorganized to the user's preference and it is saved on a user by user preference. Uh, we also have the ability to display errors in a pop-up window. Currently they show just at the bottom of the screen I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and select OK. Uh, if I go into pick and I select a particular pick, it's going to tell me as I pick that item, whatever the serial number might be, go ahead and say OK. And rather than just showing at the bottom here in the blue link, it uh, forces the error message up into the screen and so it's more recognizable. That combined with a, a separate sound should make it very easy to use, nice for the warehouse uh, in a fast-paced environment. So those are some of the things that we worked on for Fishbowl 2011. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us and we'd be ha happy to uh, walk you through a more in-depth training of uh, Fishbowl Mobile Warehouse 2011 or Fishbowl Inventory 2011. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.